And then the dad is my hero. So don't, oh, prayer and fasting is Wednesday. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. No popcorn that day. Praying and fasting Wednesday. Amen. And don't forget about Father's Day next week and, and all of those wonderful things. And to save the date, we'll be hearing more about what Jay and them are planning for the ABC uh, Summer Youth Council. Yeah. Amen. All right, well, we're going to get into this word. It's not going to take me long. It's going to be quick. Promise. AdamantBeliever.com forward slash when the devil hurts you. Dot PDF. Anybody ever been hurt by the devil? Yes, you have. Yeah. And after this message, you're going to know it even more. You're going you gonna to get unmad at the person that hurt you because you're going to know it was the devil that hurt you. Amen. Amen. Unmad. Is that a word? Can we be unmad, Evelyn? Uh -uh. Amen. D-mad? What is it? Well, when the devil hurts you, adamantbeliever.com forward slash when the devil hurts you. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's get into this. Mark 8 and 31. And Jesus began to teach them. That the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed. Now listen to this. Jesus is teaching them truth. And he's saying that but the ones that represent truth are the ones that are going to reject truth. He's teaching them that the ones that y'all see that supposedly represent the truth are the ones that's going to kill me. Now, it's easier for us to read this and understand it because we know the rest of the chapter. But just imagine the disciples when Jesus is telling them this because they believe he is who he said he was. Right? You know, later on, Peter tells them, you are the Christ. You know, that, that's who you are. We know who you are. So just imagine them hearing that, okay, now everything you know it's false. And all these guys out here are going to kill me. This is early in Mark. Eighth chapter. So this is early on. He's telling them these things are going to happen. I'm going to have to suffer many things and then they're going to reject me. And then the chief priest scribes, they're going to all kill me. And then after three days, rise again. And he spake that saying openly for everyone. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Now, this rebuke looks different if you read the rest of it and know the end. You know Peter was out of order. But at the time that it happened, who would know? Because all they know is they are with the, the Son of God. So who can kill the Son of God? So we can't really fault Peter because his level of understanding suggests that if you're the son of God, nobody can do that to you. Can I preach this message? Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, we're looking at it from, you know, we're, 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 we're uh, look, reading into the scripture based on our knowledge of the end of that chapter. But if you were there, if you were there, it would be very difficult for the Son of God to tell you that man was going to kill him. So Peter's like, wait, stop it, Jesus. <laughs> and begin to rebuke him. And rebuke sounds like a bad word, but it just means that he was saying, nah, that, this can't be true. Nah, this... That, that can't happen. You are the son of God. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter back saying, get thee behind me. What? Satan. Satan. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. But the key to this is he looked at his disciples. Then he rebuked Peter by saying, get behind me. Satan. So it really wasn't Peter that was the problem. 
The problem was someone, something was speaking through Peter. And Jesus recognized this thing speaking through you is smarter than you because this thing speaking through you knows how this thing is going to end. You're just a man. So he rebukes Satan. Y'all still with me? We as believers must operate with the mind of Christ. Amen? Amen. In all of our dealings, we need to operate with the mind of Christ. Somebody cut you off on the road, you operate with the mind of Christ. Amen? Amen? Not the mind of Cat Williams. (laughs) Somebody, (laughs) amen? Somebody clip you while you're going through the aisle at the store and grab that last can of Similac, right? You shouldn't be grabbing that, no way. Grab that last can. You have to have the mind of Christ right there, amen? Amen? Not the mind of Chris Tucker. It's not time to high side and scold. It's time to have the mind of Christ. When I got a good example of this, something happened and I knew I had to tell it, but so, the, you know, we had our seats for this flight months in advance, four or five months in advance. And all of a sudden I get an email that say, your flight, your seats, we have changed your seats. Had my family sitting, one, two, three, four, we all in a row. We've changed your seats. They moved us, scattered us all around. So unfair. Then there was a family on the plane in them seats. Huh? <laughs> So I didn't feel too good about that. And I'm going to have a conversation with him about that tomorrow. I'm waiting until Monday. Because, yes, amen. But that wasn't the issue. The issue was I wasn't sitting with my family. So I was sitting by this guy, this white guy. And he was on the phone. And so I had my bag. I have a pretty big computer bag, you know. So I sit it in the middle because there's a, you know, a gap where you can slide it under. So I sat it in the middle like I always do when I'm with my wife. And so he sat down and he looked at it. And then he was like, yeah, okay, well, it's gonna be a nice flight. He says he's on the phone the whole time doing business, whatever, whatever. And so I got the bag and I tried to, you know, kind of scoot it over to give him a little more room, you know, because I'm a nice guy. And then he got his foot and just started pushing it. And so I'm looking at it. He's trying to push because my handle had kind of come from under. It was over. He's trying to push it over with his foot. He's on the phone the whole time, so he's not looking at me. So I'm looking like, you got some big old feet there now. You know, but I let it go. And I said, okay. So I'm going to have to have a conversation with him and get up the phone, bro. Keep your feet to yourself, whatever. I got all this stuff. Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you're not mad at him. You're mad because they move your seats. But he just I'm like Peter Lord no 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 you're wrong He just kicked my bag Lord Maybe you didn't see that Maybe you was busy with somebody else But he just kicked He kicked my bag you know And the Lord said no you're not mad at him You're mad at the airlines Because they mess your seats up And you can do one of two things So you cannot say anything at all or you can react to him, which will cause probably whatever. But you'll be reacting at you will be reacting to him because of what someone else did to you. I said, "Okay, Lord, I ain't going to say nothing. I'm sitting there. He gets off the phone and he looks at me and he says, oh, man. Excuse me, I was on the phone. He said, I was moving your bag because I wanted to put my foot right there, but I didn't want to accidentally step on your strap. He said, man, I I just want you to know that. I was like, oh. He was like, yeah. He said, and if you want to lift your bag up, he said, man, you good. He said, you can have all that space. He said, I don't need it. And I was like, and then like me and him was cool the rest of the flight. When I got a fight, he was like, man, 
good to meet you, man. See you. Hope I see you again. Whatever. If I had reacted, think about that. No, 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 don't clap. Don't you clap. I want you to think about how that could have ex escalated into something stupid had I not listened to the Holy Spirit. I would have been blaming him and I was already mad about the seat, so man. <laughs> yeah, but it was the devil using something else to make me think it was him and that wasn't even the kind of guy he was. I mean, I saw myself like Mike Tyson. Remember what they did to Mike Tyson? Remember they mess with him? I saw myself just over the seat just punching this dude. <laughs> now, and then when I think about it, I'm just beating up a dude over a bag handle. So I couldn't have been mad about the bag. Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in what? Christ Jesus could have killed all of them at any time, anybody at, at will. He could have got in the flesh, got mad, and destroyed everyone. He destroyed that olive branch. Was it, yeah, olive branch. He spoke to it, said, no, no, fig, what was it? Fig tree. He spoke to that fig tree. He was hungry. And he was like, man... Well, he wasn't like man. I don't like to make Jesus jive like me. But he, he, wasn't, like, he wasn't like man, but he was like, you know, I'm hungry. I, I want some of these figs. He was that's like, ain't no figs on here? Well, then there'll never be figs on it. You don't think he could have done that to a human? You have no head ever. Head off now. He could have done it, but his mind wasn't to do that. He didn't come to be that way. He came to help people. His mind was to help. So my job as a minister, I don't know this guy, but everywhere I go, I run into somebody that knows me. So I can't be somewhere acting a fool and punching like Mike Tyson and a viral video come out. But in my mind, I had it all planned out. I said, man, I got landing two rows up. We will destroy this plane. <laughs> and Landon was wearing a tank top, too. Do you see the muscles? Oh, in 1D. Boy, it would break you off. So, you know, I had it. I mean, you know how your mind works. I'm just playing, and the Holy Spirit, like, you nuts. Something's wrong with you. But I was mad. I was angry because of something else. And I could have retaliated and caused foolishness. And this guy was as cool as a fan. Just a cool dude. Wasn't even thinking about kicking my back. He was trying to move my strap. Now, I wouldn't have done it that way. But he was on the phone. So, you know, we just got to chill. Look at somebody and say, chill out. Somebody cutting you off, you never know. And one time, somebody swerved in front of me one time, and man, I got so mad, my freckles moved. They all shifted. I was hot. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you know how much swerving you do? If the people behind you was to react to you, you'd be dead now. All that swerving. So you can't, am I telling the truth in here? Quit getting mad at stupid stuff. When you start getting mad at stupid stuff, you'll just start getting mad at stupider stuff. Oh, her is all pretty today. She thinks she's something. That's the dumbest thing I've ever said. That's so stupid. Look at him, lost a little weight. He think he's sexier than me. You stupid. Little oh, man call himself sex. You stupid, it might be gay. Don't be talking like that. Don't look at people. That's dumb stuff. Escalating into folks getting killed and chased in 
a car just chasing somebody. <laughs> Dude, what you gonna do when you catch them? What are you gonna do when you catch them? You got a dumb putty knife in your car. What you gonna do with that? <laughs> Jesus knew exactly who was against him. A prudent person. You know what prudent means, right? Considering the future. A prudent person knows who is against him. And when speaking to and referring to human adversaries, he implicated Satan as his enemy. So the people were never his enemy. It was Satan who he was, was his enemy. So Jesus didn't destroy the people because he knew one day he's going to destroy Satan. So he's not taken out on the people. The punishment that belongs to Satan. Can I keep preaching? Matthew 16 and 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me who? Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savoreth not the things that be of God, but those things that be of man. That whole rebuke he said was to Satan. Peter didn't understand, have the understanding to even understand what was just said. He said, devil, you're the offense to me. Because you're thinking of the things of man. And I'm doing the things of God. And if you had done the things of God, you'd be with me. You would never got kicked out. You know, they had history. Amen. In spiritual warfare, it is vital to recognize the enemy operating through people. Did you know you cannot do spiritual warfare against humans? It's not spiritual warfare. It's just warfare. That's going to turn into combat and call of duty. Amen. But it's a little different in the real world. Amen. These folks are tough on the internet. <laughs> Let's see them moves in person. That ain't spiritual warfare, bro. That's fist fisticus. Amen. Them same moves. You can't left, left, right, R, R, 2, R in real life. <laughs> no, bro. You gonna get whooped. But Amen. <laughs> but <laughs> in spiritual warfare, it's vital to recognize the enemy operating through people. This is what real spiritual warfare is. When you get down and pray, you don't pray against people. Right. Right. Can I preach to this, Sister Amy? Folk need to know this. Don't call them folk name and praying against them. Oh, that old devil girl. Lord, take her down in Jesus' name. <laughs> take her down, Lord. You can't do that. You're supposed to do the spirit. But, oh, but I discern her spirit. Her spirit you know, see, you, if you discern the spirit, you pray against the spirit you discern. That's what it is. It's the discerning of spirits. It ain't no gift of discernment. You don't have that. You got to have the gift of discerning of spirits. That's the gift. Discerning of spirits, not people. Discerning of spirits spirits anybody that got the gift of discerning of people is religious and they think themselves to be something when they are nothing i'm preaching here this is the mark of maturation in the faith we can't fight people and have victory You got victory because you whooped somebody? You got rocky victory? <laughs> Gonna fly now. <laughs> Done had too much rest. I was gonna do the eye of the tiger. But the spirit of the Lord stopped me. We can't fight people and have victory. We don't fight. 
Look at somebody and say, we can't fight people and have victory. You can only have victory in the spirit realm over spiritual things. This is not a flesh and blood war. First Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil. Who's the adversary? The Who's the adversary? The people? Are people the adversary? Your cousin is the adversary. Your mother-in-law, that's the adversary? Somebody, yes. 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 No. Your boss, is your boss the adversary? No. You praying against him and called his name and made a little doll of him. You done turned to witchcraft to get rid of him because you fighting the wrong enemy. No. This scripture tells us exactly who our adversary is. Because your adversary, it could have just said be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary as a roaring lion walks about seeking who, it doesn't say that. It says your adversary who? The The devil. The devil is your adversary. People aren't against you. The devil is against you through people. Folks don't like this. You know why they don't like this? Because you got to let folks off the hook. They don't want this message. Oh, it's time to go. I I have an appointment to go eat. I don't want to hear this. Because you got to let folks off the hook because it's not the folks. It's the devil working in the folks. You know how I know that? Because the devil has worked in you before. Look at somebody. Oh, no, no, no. From the womb, I have observed all the commandments. Shut up. Try to quote a scripture like it's you. (laughs) From a lad, I have led. No. He's worked through all of us, so we can't do that. So it says be sober and be vigilant. Pay attention. Look at somebody say pay attention. Pay attention because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about doing what? Seeking whom he may what? Devour. Now, how else is the devil going to do it unless he uses a person? The devil could have killed us. None of us would be here. The devil didn't just start thinking about you last week. He's been wanting to kill you all along. So he tries to get in the right. That's why you got to watch who you put close to you. Amen. Because they may be... I'm preaching in here. Amen. Amen. The devil has no real power since all power in heaven and earth was delivered to Jesus upon his glorification. I say this every week because I just like it. I I love this part. I love saying it. I want to put it in every sermon from now on. I, I don't care. So he uses people and works through their what? Feelings. To attack us. Yeah, so it's a spiritual war, and emotions are spiritual. Yeah, you can't see them, just like spiritual things. So it's a person's attitude, it's their mind, it's the way they think about you, all of that stuff. Now, it does manifest in natural things, them attacking you or whatever they're doing physically, but it starts in their heart, in their emotions. So if the devil can turn their heart and cause something to happen to them, Man, I got this email. Oh, Sherry sent me that email from Ralph Lauren saying, if, if Father's Day emails bother you, then you can opt out. And some people see that and, you know, people was commenting, I mean, well, what's wrong? You may have lost a father or something and the day bothers you. They don't bother you if you lost a father. You celebrate your dad that day. Well, I don't celebrate my dad because he was a jive turkey. That's what's wrong with you. It ain't the email. You need to get delivered. And the email won't bother you. But they want you to opt out of the Father's Day. Then they're going to want you to opt out of the Mother's Day. Then they're going to want, because they're destroying the image that God has created of male and female, father and mother, and children being raised. Yeah, so everybody's emotions are getting catered to now. Won't you send me an opt out of the LGBTQ squared plus nine 
email? How come that one don't have an opt out? Why can't I opt out of the rainbow flags y'all sending? All the pride foolishness. They worked hard in this pandemic to add them Negro colors to the pride flag because it was never about the Negroes to begin with. They need to ride the oppression of Negroes. They need that because that has volume and voice that homosexuals don't. Amen. I walked, we walked into Disney Springs the other day and I'm seeing all this pride, just pride, pride, pride. Got the Mickey and Mouse with the rainbow. Rainbow, pride, pride, gay, pride. And I'm walking through there and I don't see no gays. I'm like, well, everybody in here is look okay. So why you got all the... And then I realized that 1% of the population, you're not going to see many anyway. 1%. So they have to borrow the voice of African Americans and borrow the oppression of African Americans to get their agenda across. I know I'm teaching. Yeah. When they had black and brown, I, a rainbow came out in Orlando. I'm looking at the sky. I didn't see no black and brown in the rainbow. And who gave them permission to add it? Oh, BLM did. That's all right. Yeah. Because that's what all of that was about. All that BLM, all of the, the street riot, all of that stuff was so that the homosexuals, the LGBT, oh, they going to stop me from putting this on YouTube. But the LGBT, all of them had to ride the coattail of the oppression of African Americans that used to be. You hear I say used to be. Y'all sitting in here with Ralph Lauren and Jordans, you ain't oppressed. You ain't oppressed. You wearing matte makeup and fashion fur. All at the mall shopping, you got everything the white man has. You ain't oppressed. Amen. Oh, 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 oh the black, oh, the black tweezers are so open. Hush! Your shirt costs a hundred dollars. That ain't oppression. Oh, I'm preaching in here. Man, I'm weaving in everything in this message. It took a week off. It was just, it just piling up. <laughs> so he uses people and works through their emotions to attack us. He just manipulates. Let me hear him get this face off the screen. Matthew 28 and 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. When we carry hurt and trauma from the attacks of men, we develop issues with people. Yes, this is the formula. When we carry, look at somebody and say, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I carried that issue with American Airlines. I was mad about it. And I carried that to my seat. And that issue in that short amount of time almost made me act a fool my emotions but I chose to listen to the spirit and obey what God said and be prudent I chose that now had I been listening to Kendrick Lamar on the way up there amen and watch the real housewives of Hidden Valley <laughs> If I had watched that show and then watched the news all day and watched all of the killings of black folks, I had somebody from the FBI send me a list of all the black killers that had mass shootings this year. 15 of them. Have you heard about them? No. No. Mass shootings by blacks. So if I'm watching the news, Listening to Kendrick, on the way, I'm sitting down. I can't hear the spirit of the Lord talking to me because I filled myself up with an adversary. Yeah. Or if I sat there and drank 
a big gulp, the suicide where I mixed all the flavors, the diets, everything. Put a little slush in there, everything. Ice slush, you just, you, the quick trip, they got about 40 nozzles you can use. I put the caramel flavor, the chocolate. I, I just made a concoction that's bubbling when I get through. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, if I drink that, that's gonna go straight to my brain. I'm be like, man, don't you kick my brain. <laughs> Racism, Racism! <laughs> White man kicking my black bag. My bag is black. His foot is white. He's kicking the black bag. Then y'all done moved the white family in my original seats. American Airlines is racist. All because I drunk that suicide. And it was suicide. I'm killing myself the more I yell. Yeah, and then eat a honey bun with it. You're going to say something stupid. Stupid! Somebody convicted about that quick trip. Cause you know you done went, nah, I mean you got coffee in there, Powerade in there, you done put slush and everything is in there. I got 10% of everything. This is the sweetest drink ever. <laughs> Wonder why you seeing double all the time. Hey brother. <laughs> but when we carry hurt and trauma from the attacks of men we develop issues with people so because of this trauma in our lives now we have issues with humans not the devil why no issue with the devil you like the devil stuff you have an issue with people you let the devil do stuff to you to make you hate people I don't hate people, I'm just introverted. You ain't no turtle. Why are you always in the shade? That's an excuse. Oh, you done developed an issue because of the issue. Trauma and pain, hurt, and what men have done have caused you to not trust men and have issues with people. So whether it be race, gender, or class, we will demonize certain people groups because of what people did to us directly or indirectly. Yeah. Yeah. You wearing a tailor-made suit talking about what the white man has done to you. White man made the suit. That's what he's done for you. But you mad at white people because of an issue and a trauma. You mad at a people group. White races too, they mad at blacks. I don't even know blacks. You don't know blacks. You don't know blacks built this country. You mad at blacks and blacks done built this country. I, I tell the truth, I tell the truth. Hey, now I ain't on no crazy stuff, so don't, don't look for more, but that's the truth. That's the truth. The slaves built this country. Yep, just like God's people built Egypt. And Egypt was Negroes. Dark as that pole. As Negro as you can get. As, I mean, the deepest, darkest black there ever was. It's Egypt. And they got cursed by God. Black people, cursed by God. God said they would walk around as brute beasts and never be able to put a colony together again in Egypt. Where is, where, where is Pharaoh now? Where, 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 the, the, it's over and it never will be again. Oh, ruins. Ruin. I don't want to clap. See, they don't want to clap. Now, you don't know history, bro. Oh, I can take you there, but I ain't got time. Just wait on it. It'll be coming. But you mad at you, you mad at a people group because of what you heard happen. You've been good on your job. Making money, got raises and everything. And some old contrary Negro came up to you one day and, hey man, <laughs> this boss man, he be tripping. <laughs> he on that white stuff. <laughs> you know, things have been a little shady around here. <laughs> you know who that is? The guy you can talk into that foolishness is a guy that don't have no authority in his own home. Yeah. So he's looking for a movement. 
He's looking for something to attach himself to so he can feel strong because he's weak in his house. His wife is running everything. She's making him do everything. So he's trying to attach himself to some Negro mess or some kind of gang mess or whatever it is. He don't have no authority nowhere else. Yeah, these pastors, same thing. They get off into this junk and turn their whole church because they live with a witch. They don't have no authority at home. I don't have to attach myself to no movement. I got a movement. Here it is right here. And then she gave me three more. And then they just moving with me. Even Spyro moves with me. All of them moving. That's my movement. That's what I've attached myself to. I don't need the world to prove me. I'm a provider, a protector, and a priest as God said I would be. Attach myself to no lie, to no fable. You want to feel like a man? Take care of somebody. Can you take care of somebody? You want to feel like a man? So whether it be race, gender, or class, man, I'm preaching in here. They will demonize certain people groups because of what people did to us directly and indirectly. They don't have nothing to do with you. Man, Benjamin Franklin slept with all them women. Benjamin Franklin? Who is that? <laughs> he slept with all them black. So? He discovered electricity too. Get rid of his electricity then. You ain't gonna get... <laughs> you ain't gonna turn your lights off. Turn your lights off. Oh, that old beard. I, I just can't even use his lights. He was so racist. He had all them slaves. I turned his lights off. Right now, turn them off. Everybody gonna be like, bro, that ain't got nothing to do with me and my, and my lights. It made too much sense for him, Bobby. They just, man, I don't want to hear that stupid stuff. First John 2 and 9, he that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even unto now. If you hate white people, you in darkness. If you don't believe white people, black people, whoever can be redeemed by the blood of Jesus, you in darkness and you going to hell. Brother, you going to hell. I hope you don't. I want to try to help you. But if you believe that you are a part of a superior people group, you are on your way to hell. You ain't special. When we carry issues with men and we do not target the man, I'm losing my voice. I ain't never done that before. Let me get some water over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we carry issues with men, we do not target the real enemy. And therefore, we do not stop his what? Attacks. attacks. So when you have issues with people, you don't stop the attacks from the enemy. And the attack was from the enemy. So you fight the person, but the attack was from the enemy. So you fight that person, beat up that person, slander that person, maliciously go after him, talk about him, dog him out. All of that, and you still have the same problem. Because you didn't address the real problem, which was the enemy. Even worse than that, now you've become an enemy. So not only did you not fix the problem, but you became a part of the problem. Can I keep preaching? He will continue to fight us and win battles because we are focused on the wrong enemy. Ephesians 6 and 12. For we wrestle not against what? Flesh and, Flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against what? Did it say people? So what are we wrestling against? Did it say people? Did it say humans? Your cousin? 
your wife, your husband, your pastor, your friend. No, ain't none of them your enemy. It's spiritual wickedness. It's the devil. Carnal retaliation is not a weapon from God, but it is the exact response that Satan desires. He wants us to hate people and attack others to keep us busy fighting one another and losing the spiritual battle for, for our soul. You know, when we're fighting one another, we're losing the spiritual battle. I had a brother texting me this morning. I was texting with him. He's, man, what has happened to the church, man? The church has just failed in so many ways. This he just going on and on. I'm like, dude, the church is busy fighting each other. Yeah. They're fighting each other. 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. And you know who taught them that? Their upbringing. Because in their house, they were all fighting each other. And even now, they fight each other. So when they come to church, they're going to do the same thing. I can't pastor nobody that hates their father. I can't pastor anybody that has a problem with their mother. You have any one of those problems, you're going to have a problem with guess who? Me. Because you don't like your earthly leadership. How are you going to submit to your spiritual leadership? Second Corinthians 10 and 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the what? Pulling down, Pulling down of strongholds. Man, this message is good. The devil loves being obscured by our slander, hatred, malice, jealousy, and envy. Because he knows we are walking away from the safety of God and right into his plan to steal, kill, and destroy. He sits back and watch you dog your neighbor out. He loves that. You just, that's all a part of his plan. John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and then what? Destroy. The devil comes to destroy. So he hides in your bad attitude. Yeah. Y'all saw that movie um, Cabin in the Sky last week or two weeks ago. Remember that? And remember the devil said, oh, we got to call in our greatest sinner. Lena Horn. What was her name? Sweet Georgia Brown. Anybody named Sweet Georgia Brown is bad for you. <laughs> Even when they name a restaurant Sweet Georgia Brown, it's bad for you. Sweet can't be in the title. And you live long. Sweet Georgia Brown. <clears throat> yeah, and so he called in his greatest sinner. Do you know some folks, the devil just calls them when he needs Rukas? When he needs some mess to jump off, he got some folks in his contacts, in the favorites. And he called them because he know that everything they're a part of they destroy, including their own family. I'm telling the truth. Amen. Amen. You got to be about reconciliation and building and loving and fixing. Amen. I'm the guy. I want to fix it. When we realize that the true enemy is the devil, then we can see strife among our brothers and sisters. And do what? Join, join to look at somebody and say, join together. Join together and fight against the real enemy. We are not each other's enemy in here. I mean, and we're gonna pray right after this, and when I call this out to call, anybody. I mean, everybody come, but make sure you come. If there's somebody in here you avoiding on Sundays, you need to come up here. Because that's not your enemy. Why are you avoiding somebody in church? Do you know if you're avoiding somebody, you're avoiding somebody in church, you can't hear me. 
you're, you're entertained by the jokes. That's funny. When I act the fool, you like that part. But when I'm preaching, you can't hear me. Because you got a problem with somebody in here. And the devil is using that person to cause you to miss the message. And that's how folks stay in here for years. And then all of a sudden, I don't like it no more. What changed? Can I preach it? Yeah. Philippians 2 and 2. Fulfill ye my joy, and ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of what? One. one. You should love everybody in here. Amen. Amen. And don't be the person. Ooh, don't be trifling. That's a trifling person got to tell you all the time that they have a problem with you. You don't tell that to nobody. Sister, you know, I just want to let you know I was thinking some things about you and I was feeling some kind of way, but, you know, I gave it to God. And God that's witchcraft. Because now you're going to have them thinking later that night. What? <laughs> what, <laughs> what did I do? What did I say? What? What? Don't come tell me that. Pastor, I have to repent to you. For what? Pastor, I was thinking some things and saying, I didn't hear it. I can't read your mind. Will you go on about your business? Because now I'm going to look at you funny for the rest of your tenure at ABC. Because I'm going to be wondering what you're thinking about me. I had a problem with you, Pastor, man. I, 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 but, 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 but everything's good now. What did I do? I mean, you didn't do nothing. They just had said that you said, and they had said. Who? Who is they? What? We're not in the sandbox. On the playground, we grown people. Anybody talk me out of what God told me? I'm grown. Anybody grown in here? Nobody gonna talk me out of what somebody, and then, what? Philippians 2 and 2. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded. We got to be what? Man. And it's okay if you're not. Because we have doors. We have doors. So if you're not like-minded, it's not going to work. Summary. Man, the devil ain't trying to take my voice. I just ate bad. Because I was on vacation. Hey, Amen. I get it together. Where Kelly at? We're going to get it together tomorrow. We're we going to start working on it. But hey, I took a week off. <clears throat> if I lose my voice and can't finish this, God didn't want me to say none of it. Today, many so-called believers are fighting with the devil and not what? Against him. They have disdain and hatred for our church, certain preachers, and even their Christian parents because of traumatic experiences in their upbringing and spiritual rearing. The devil loves for us to believe that we have human enemies that operate independent of him. But that's not true. None of your human enemies operate independent of the devil. Only two forces, good and evil. Amen. When you operate in evil, your father is the devil. The Bible made that abundantly clear. You ain't in the middle. You can't choose lukewarmness. This is where I am. I ain't really with God. And I ain't really with the devil either. Then you're with the devil. The minute you said you wasn't with God, you with the devil. Demon, shut up. The devil loves for us to believe that. But every good and perfect thing comes from God. And every evil and perverse thing comes from the enemy. We are given the ability to do what? Choose good or evil with our God-given dominion in the earth. When we are saved, Christ lives within us. When we hate, attack, and maliciously hurt others, the devil is our master. There is no middle ground. Even if we consider it justice, 
or revenge. Yeah, somebody stole something from you, you run after them and shoot them. You got justice, but it wasn't from God. Somebody oppressed you and despitefully used you because you were a Negro. Amen. I see y'all see where this is going, right? Yeah, we don't we don't seek justice. We forgive. Well, I need reparations. Well, you keep waiting on those. Amen. I'm gonna go work and get me a check from the white man. Yes, from the white man. I'm gonna work for the white man. Get me a check from the white man. I'm gonna wear the white man's clothes and drive. Definitely drive the white man's car. Cause he, I don't want to drive no black man's car. I want the white man. I want Elon Musk's car, to be specific. Now don't get me wrong. You know, the black dude just invented a TV that powers itself. And I need that. <laughs> That's going to help that bill. It just uses stuff in the air. Y'all pray for him. <laughs> pray for him. <laughs> yeah. So don't get me wrong. Black folks are inventive. But right now in America, a lot of our stuff is just by Caucasians. And that's cool. I'm going to use it. Amen. Amen. I know they were wrong to our ancestors. And that was wrong. But only God can repay them for that. And I'm not going to scream bloody justice too loud because if I go back just a few hundred years prior to that, I see what the Negroes did to people groups. Boy, 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 this is good. When we hate, attack, and maliciously hurt others, the devil is our master. There is no middle ground. Even if we consider it justice or revenge, it's still not from God. God is the judge, and he will repay our true enemy. Because it's not about the white man, black man, or no man. It's about the enemy. Because at some point, we were all on the devil's side. And we have to come to Christ just as we are. So we can't forget where we came from and cut the mercy off for anyone else. That's why we can't be the judge. But we are not allowed to fight one another because of what was done to us. Man, I've preached here today. We must remain loving and forgiving toward people. And know that it's the devil working through them. Just as he has worked through us before. When we mature to the point of understanding this. We become powerful intercessors and prayer warriors. That's why Jesus said. If you stand before me praying. Forgive. So your prayers can even work. Then he said if you got to give. Set your gift down. Go be reconciled and fix that mess. Yeah. Then come back yeah. so that you can be a prayer warrior and intercessor. Yeah. Your prayers can count for something. Yeah. Know this, a true intercessor can pray in the spirit against deeds done in the flesh. Yeah, that's right. You got to pray in the spirit against deeds done in the flesh. Yeah. You know what that means? That means you can't pray against flesh. You pray in the spirit against deeds. But a person that fights back in the flesh does not intercede for others. They take matters into their own hands and end up reaping what was sown just like their enemies. This is why vengeance belongs to the Lord. And we must learn to pray for our enemies and intercede for them to find grace and mercy just as we have. Amen. Woo, this was a good message. Did it bless you? Yes. Now, 
we come to a different story here. This is Simon. And Jesus came and saw them appearing to them again. And Peter saw him, and the Bible said he had to get up and put on some clothes. Peter was so messed up, he was laying out there buck <laughs> naked. And back in the Jewish days, that's like the worst thing a person can do is expose himself. He was naked. He was just jive. He was, he was just out of there, like young folks say. Peter was out of there. Well, because he had thought he was the one, he thought he was this, he that, and Jesus kept trying to tell him, no, Peter, you ain't really or whatever. So when Christ, now listen to this, when Christ rebuked Peter and said, Satan, get thee behind me, Satan. If he had said, get behind me, Peter, because you messed up, you're against me, he would have broke Peter forever. So he had to say, Satan, look how messed up Peter was. And Jesus didn't even direct it to him. Just think if Jesus had directed. The Lord, the son of God, calls you trash. He would have never made it to this beach around this fire. So Jesus was prudent. And he addressed the real enemy. It wasn't Peter. It was the devil working through Peter. You know how I know? Because he was saying, just as the devil worked through you, I'm going to work through you. So when they're dying, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Remember when you said that? Do you really love me more? And he said unto him, yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Then feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. And Peter was getting grieved, but he didn't understand what Jesus was doing. Jesus was undoing what Peter had done. Because when he was warming himself at the first fire, he denied him three times. So for each one of those times, I need you to claim me three times. And he gave him another opportunity. But this is all because he didn't destroy him in the first conversation he put it on satan and not peter to preserve this man to use him see we don't know what people's futures are so we got to be careful when we're judging careful when we're speaking careful when we're attacking the wrong enemy because it's not the people it's the devil working through them and just like peter the devil can work through them but if they're redeemed god can work through them Everyone stand to your feet. Some people are caught up in a fight with the wrong enemy. Man, and they're causing so much damage to themselves because they're fighting the wrong enemy. It's the devil that's our enemy, not people. So I'm going to pray with you today. So that you can be directional in your spiritual warfare and your attacks against the spiritual realm and against the devil and not hurt people along the way. Come on up. If that's you, you need help in this area. Just, I want to target the enemy. I don't want to hurt people. God, make me prudent. Make me consider. Even though they aggravate me, agitate me. Father God, even though they get on my nerves, oh, they won't leave me alone. They keep bothering me. Help me to realize that it's not them. It's the devil working through them to stop the purpose you have for me. You have a purpose that you have to protect. And the devil's after your purpose. So while you are fighting a person, the devil is stealing, killing and destroying 
your purpose. Amen. Remember the message, drain the pool? <laughs> Can't get caught up fighting the alligators. You got to drain the pool. I mean, when I preached that message, every alligator that was a gator and had teeth came after me. And I had to stay focused and do what God taught me. Drain the pool. You know why? Because there are thousands and thousands that would not hear this truth if I get caught up fighting the wrong enemy. I got to keep fighting our only enemy, which is the devil. Amen? Amen. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this message. We thank you, Lord, for making this message real to us today. Father God, for giving us understanding, revelation, speaking to us. God, we thank you, Lord, because we don't want to shadow box and fight the air and target things that bring us no victory. Fighting against people instead of loving them. Hating them instead of reconciling. Slandering them instead of blessing them. God, we don't want to be like that. But Father God, we want to fight the devil with you. We want to fight the right enemy. We want to fight the enemy, the devil, and not our brothers and our sisters. So God, help us right now in that area. Make us directional in our attacks, Father God. Make us directional in our defenses. Make us directional, Father God. Help us, Father God, to fight the right fight. Help us, Father God, to target the right target. We don't want to miss and accidentally hit someone, hurt someone, scar someone, mess someone up forever because of our anger, because of our malicious attacks. God, we don't want to be messy, sloppy in a fight and a battle, caught up fighting a person. But God, we want to be directional and fight the enemy that is against us. So help us to keep our minds on the right enemy, God to save our families, to save our children, to save our husband, to save our wife, to save our future, save our in-laws, sa to save and not ruin. In the name of Jesus, everyone lift your hands. And Father, I pray right now for a special anointing with power for discerning of spirits. Father God, that we will see and know the spirit that is trying to get us to compromise. We will recognize that spirit that is trying to take our purpose. We will know that spirit that is after our children. That spirit that is after our marriage. That spirit, Father God, show us that spirit so that we can launch an attack against it. With your word, with the sword of the spirit, with a watchful eye. Help us, Father God, to be warriors in the name of Jesus to fight this spiritual battle and be effective in intercessory prayer. In Jesus name we pray. Thank you Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and hug somebody. Not just these folks. All over the building, hug them and say, you're not my enemy, so I'm not fighting you. Come on, say, you're not my enemy, so I'm not fighting you. Now find that person you've been fighting and tell them, the fight is over. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Look at somebody, tell them I'm not fighting you. I love you. I don't fight folks I love. You are not my enemy. You are not my enemy. Hallelujah. 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 Man, this word was good today. Like old folks say, today. Not today. Today. It's a good word. Hallelujah. Fight the devil. Don't fight people. Amen.